Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Winter Peg Report. I am your host, Mark Adam. Thank you for joining us today. I want to remind you before we get rolling that you can follow us on all the social media platforms. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. We're also on Twitch and uh, TikTok. Follow us on TikTok. There's no content there yet, but it's coming. Don't worry about that. Also, if you want to get in touch with us, you can call or text the WPG Talk Line, 431-800-4555. You can also reach us by email, podcasts at the WPG.ca. So if you want to be a guest on the show or you know somebody that we should have as a guest on the show, reach out to us. Go right ahead. Anybody looking to advertise on this show or the WPG.ca can also reach out, call 431-489-2401 or email ads at the WPG.ca. So I want to introduce our guests today, I have, and guests plural, uh, the first time we've had more than one guest on the podcast, and they are from Underworld LARP and the, the Guildhouse Mist Haven, and these are... Colton Day and Daniel Johnston. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us here. Good to be here, Mark. Excellent. Uh, hey, so, uh, yeah, I, I'm very excited to to have you guys. I so for those that don't know, which is most people uh, slash everyone else, I met these gentlemen at Winnipeg Comic Con. They had a booth set up, and they were kind of showing off what underworld larp is all about and uh it was very cool display very cool display gentlemen and uh so let's uh let's quickly talk about that but let's start with first of all when we say larp people don't know what that is let's start there and then we'll work up to the more specifics of like who you guys are in that world so larping uh i'll throw it to colton first i suppose uh what is larping uh, so LARP is an acronym. I hope I have the right word for that. I'm not an English major. Um, but uh, it, uh, it stands for live action role play. Um, it's a, uh, a way of just uh, putting a D&D character or a campaign or similar fantasy character uh, out uh, into a, a real world and you play that character instead of on a board game or a tabletop or uh, with a controller or something. So you you are that person. That's what makes it live action. Uh, the role play aspect is you are donning the persona of this completely different person other than yourself. Uh, so if you're a goody two shoes in the real world and you just want to be this um, skullduggery thief that just goes around and screws up people's days and have zero consequences, that's totally fine. Yeah, I love that. That's so good. Uh, is, do you have anything to add to that, uh, Daniel? Uh, no, he summed it up uh, perfectly. Uh, it's basically what LARP is. It's Dungeons and Dragons in real life. Yeah, so I, I love that. So role-playing games, a lot of people are familiar with. Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder. Uh, a lot of people are familiar with video game, role-playing games like World of Warcraft and uh, like RuneScape. And like there's, I mean, there's probably thousands we could name that people would be probably familiar with. But um, so live action role-playing is just that. You're taking a character on and becoming that character. Um Generally, is it done as a day thing or more? Is it more often a weekend or because I know that you guys tend to do it as more of a weekend, but is it does it di differ depending on the organization? Uh, there, there are differences depending on who you play with. Um, us, we do a Friday evening, Saturday, Sunday, um, or if it's a long weekend, we extend into that as well. Um, but yeah, there are games that last, you know, up to eight hours. There are some that I go four hours, but it depends on who you play with. Right. Um, I so I was I did manage to talk to you guys a little bit uh, about who you guys are because LARPing is. I mean, it greatly depends. There's different rule sets, same as role playing games, right? So, like, there's there's games like 
Fallout, for instance, is like post-apocalyptic, and World of Warcraft is like fan high fantasy kind of thing. So, uh, what is your your group Underworld LARP? Uh, what is that exactly? And I guess let's go the opposite way. Let's start with Daniel, and then we'll toss it back to Colton in case he missed anything. Sure. Uh, so, Underworld LARP is a dark high fantasy. Um, so they host like focus on more of like a horror aspect. Um, I like to say, you know, a mix between uh, Diablo, Silent Hill, and uh, or Dark Souls. Right. Okay. So um, then, you, so you, the kind of characters you take on are very like they're as as you said before, very D and D like in in the type of game that you play, like that kind of style, elves and and orcs and that kind of thing yeah elves orcs hobbits dwarves um there's Fae. different types of elves different types of dwarves all that kind of thing uh yeah so uh anything to add to to like what underworld larp is specifically colton um so their their moniker like like dan said uh it, it's a it's a high fantasy horror larp um, so as he describes it, uh, I, I describe it a little bit differently. It's uh, kind of like a sleepy hollow witcher, uh, like that, that old grim fairy tales kind of, uh, dark aesthetic, um, in the, in the overall theme, I guess would be the best words for it. Uh, but, uh, their, their moniker is, uh, run, fight, hide. Um, so number one, you should run. Number two, if you can't run, you have to fight. And if you don't want to do either of those, you should just hide from whatever's trying to kill you. Um, <laughs> it's it's a it's a good tactic, um, uh, but uh, the uh, like what Underworld LARP is in itself is um, it is Canada's largest um, franchise group. Uh, for LARP. Uh, so we are actually, like when we say Guildhouse Misthaven, we are one of, I think, 12 here in Canada uh, that uh, are all across uh, Canada. And uh, I believe there's uh, two down, uh, down in the States, uh, one in Florida and one in North Dakota, I believe. Um, I could be wrong. Um, but the... Uh, <clears throat> Underworld LARP as a whole uh, is a community before anything else, really. Uh, and that's kind of what uh, LARP is in general as well. It's a community of people that have similar interests and want to spend time swinging foam swords at each other and uh, have a good time doing it. And there's an entire combat system, correct? Like there's a whole way that battle works when you finally you know run fight hide when you finally get into that fight there there's rules there's because because there's weapons and spells and all these different things and certain types of characters are immune to certain attacks and all that kind of stuff like there's a lot happening um so like how how does that all work the combat um so combat works uh the, sorry, the melee combat is pretty intuitive. Uh, it's quite simple. Uh, if you have a steel sword, you swing for normal damage like anything else. Um, if you have a, um, say, an iron sword, it, uh, it deals different damage to different creatures. Like you mentioned, certain things are immune or weak to certain aspects Uh of the game uh, with the melee combat uh, as well as the magic uh, as well. There's a whole hierarchy of what uh, what magic goes through certain armors. Uh, and then there's the uh, elemental wheel, so to speak, um, lightning, fire, ice, and earth. Um, obviously, a ice elemental takes more damage from fire and a fire elemental takes more damage from ice and there are certain characters in the game uh not only player characters but npcs as well that will uh 
have these natural affinities or weaknesses to uh, certain types of damage. So it's uh, it's a quite heavy rule set to get into, but uh, we've noticed that it's a uh, if you try it uh, and slowly work into it, that's easier than trying to read the rule book <laughs> and memorize the whole thing. Just yeah. memorize enough to do what you want and then expand on that, just like any other um, hobby or talent or, or trade skill, anything like that. Right. And and like as with D&D, I imagine that you try and let people know there's no shame in not knowing a rule because i know that we'll play when we're playing uh dungeons and dragons and whatnot sometimes we'll um we'll 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 have people uh you know go to do a thing and then the dm's like actually you can't do that your character is this so like people whose first time it is right they there's no shame they're trying not to be shamed in any kind of way about what they don't know Right, like I'm gonna cast this spell. Well, you don't have that spell, so you can't cast that spell yet, right? So mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of that going on. Um, so I, I would assume that it's the same, like because you said your community first. So it's people helping people get into this, right? Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Um, so we as game runners have what we call a. Um, there are a number of volunteers that help us out during the game, uh, and we all we're all familiar with uh, how the rules work. Um, we're you know very near to the players, especially when combat is going on. Uh, and if anybody has questions, we're always there to step in and help out. Uh, and then when game hurts. Um, at Logistics, we print out your character sheet, and you also get a printout of what spells your character actually has readily available. Uh, so that helps them out well. Right. And then, uh, so when you guys are running games, are you characters as well? Or are you just, like, basically, like, the equivalent of a referee sort of thing? Um, so... Most of us shapers, uh, as Dan said, uh, we do help out. Uh, we do have um, characters that we play. Uh, we call them uh, town NPCs. Uh, they're basically these uh, pseudo leaders of the town that kind of help guide players through the storyline. Uh, like they, they're the ones who hear about the the rustling in the bushes or they they get a letter from the owner of the lumber mill and they want people to come down and check out what's um, gnawing through his posts and all that stuff right uh, so we do have um those um we do act as referees as you called them um but uh it is uh we're we kind of lead the storyline and make sure that nobody's uh, cheating or uh, and that everybody's following the rules. Right. Uh, so you guys do play characters. Kind of if you want to compare it to Diablo, like Dan brought up earlier, or Daniel, uh, he said, you know, so that you'd be like the Deckard Cain, like giving out the, the main quest lines and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. Right on. So you guys, you guys have a facility that you – work out of correct uh yes we rent a hobby farm uh off of a, another uh larp group uh the steinbach larper society they also uh rent out the facility to another larp group uh known as havoc uh so it's three groups sharing one facility uh and uh it's a uh, a nice little um hobby farm just south of uh, Steinbeck in Paradise Valley, uh, right near uh, St. Anne. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, they have uh, guinea fowl and chickens, which add to the atmosphere. Um, there was word that they may or may not be getting a goat this year, which I will be super happy about because I love goats. But uh... Who doesn't love a goat? Come on. 
<laughs> and uh, so uh, their facility, uh, they bought it, uh, I think, uh, four years ago, four or five years ago. And uh, they, uh, they've been sprucing it up over the years. And uh, we were looking for a site last year. And uh, we know the owners through um, other other events and uh, camaraderie and, and all that jazz. Uh, and uh, so we asked them if we could uh, pay them a small fee. And uh, they said yes. So here we are. Nice. So you didn't ask them if you could pay a big fee? You were like, can we pay you a little bit of money? Um... Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll toss this one to, to Daniel then. Um, so we've talked about what LARPing is. We've talked about what Underworld LARP is. And we've sort of beat around the bush about you and your guild specifically. But what is Guild House Mist Haven? Like where, how did you come up with the name? And what is that, what is that about? Uh, the name took us a little bit. Um, at first we had, I think, Grey Haven. Um, and then speaking with the global team, when we first initially started out, they're like, you want something a little more memorable and it jumps off the page and will get players out to play. Uh, and that's where we came up with Mint, uh, just because of the whole sleep hollow uh, Silent Hill kind of vibe that it would give off. Right on. And so you guys are uh, very local, right? Like, obviously, like, there's communities but you're winnipeg specific or like are you more manitoba it's manitoba Y. that's the kind of the territory they give you um that basically means that no other underworld uh, franchise can open within manitoba right okay yeah. and so when you when you buy a franchise you get to run all your own events and you get to charge the fees and all that stuff. Do you get to make up the fees based on what it costs you to put on the event or is that preset by Underworld LARP? Uh, the only preset that they have is the minimum that we charge. Um, and that's just basically because we can't undercut other guilds right. to try to force their players to come to us kind of thing. Right. Well, which would be hard because, you know, Canada's big. It's not like you're going to undercut the Ontario guys, you know? It's like, hey, come to Manitoba to play. It's like, yeah, the six guys living in Kenora might. But, like, other than that, um, yeah. So, and speaking of, how big is Guildhouse Misthaven at this point? How how active is your community? Uh, well, uh, when, we, when we last talked to you at Comic-Con, we only had uh, 22 active players. Um, but currently, uh, now that the postseason has uh, um, kind of helped us uh, grow our player base as well, we now have about uh, 35 players coming out to our event this weekend, which is a Yule Ball that we're putting on, kind of like just this uh, fancy schmancy um, dress up in a gown and come out for an evening. Uh, sort of uh, event right I remember you guys had mentioned that when we were when we were chatting uh, I thought it was originally planned for January was it not uh, yes but the yeah. uh, because we assumed uh, with COVID and uh, the um, Christmas season uh, work parties were going into January we felt that uh, first weekend of February would be a nice uh, tie-in just to keep people interested uh, and not in the lull uh, because we are an outdoor event and we don't want uh, anybody freezing their toes and fingers off um, in minus 35. Yeah, welcome to uh, Winnipeg, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, get, um, so, I get it, yeah. So, yeah, it was just our kind of way to... Uh, um, it was evenly spaced between our last event and uh, what we were hoping to have as our season opener in uh, April or May. Uh, it was just timing wise. It was just this nice um, middle refresher. So right. To speak. Yeah. Okay. So then, 
for, for the both of you, I'm not sure which one of you wants to answer this question first, but I'm sure you both have things to, to, to add to this. But how do Mist Haven events work? Because you guys, you said, you know, four hours, eight hours, whatever. I know you guys do whole weekend trips. And that's really cool, by the way. As a guy who loves camping and RPGs, um, like that just seems like a very, very cool thing to me. So uh, I'll, I'll toss it to the both of you uh, to, to answer that question. What, like, how do Mist Haven events work? Go ahead. Uh, all right. Uh, so we start off logistics at about 5, 5.30 on a Friday. Uh, players will show up. They'll pay the game fee, and then they'll get their character sheets, any of the tags that they have for the production uh, skills, uh, whether it be alchemy, blacksmithing, or trapping. Uh, and then they'll move on to our uh, weapon. We'll get their gear checked out, and then our armor marshal will get their armor checked out. Um, we'll have kind of a drawn rules uh, and that kind of thing that Colton will give on. And then game will start probably about 7.30 or so on a Friday. Um, and then it basically goes the entire weekend. Uh, you're in character the whole weekend. Uh, we can throw monsters at you pretty much whenever we feel like it. Um, and then we have an overarching storyline that we try to follow for the weekend. Right. Um, so... Dan touched on the uh, the event itself and its kind of layout uh, that way, um, but uh, the what goes into it uh, prior to that is about uh, a month and a half pre-event uh, of writing and quest making, uh, all of the uh, the background logistical uh, aspects of it all. Uh, which can be uh, with our with our writing team is, is pretty great uh, so far. Um, last year we uh, due to COVID we only uh, were able to do three games, so it was kind of a, a nice dry run of a season. We're hoping this year uh, to get a full season uh, worth of games, um, and hopefully we are able to write quick enough to uh, fill all that time and. Uh, make sure that the events are enjoyable and keep uh, people coming back. That's awesome. And and people were at Comic-Con when I saw you, they were very taken with the, the setup you had. And that was, it was very cool. And for those listening, there is an article that I wrote about Comic-Con on the WPG.ca. So if you go there and literally just search Comic-Con, it will come up. I think the article was titled uh, Winnipeg Comic Con, A Success Story. And uh, so there's there's uh, a lot you can read there about all the different stuff that went on. But there was a pretty decent section on, you know, Underworld Lar Guildhouse Mist Haven, which I thought was, I was for me, like just the coolest thing that I saw there was your guys' setup and the idea of LARPing and I was like, that is that is exactly what Comic Con I feel is for is to discover stuff like that that you didn't know was in your backyard, right? Um, so you said like after the, what do, do you think Comic Con really helped your numbers jump there? You said you're, you know, you got a lot of people coming to the your Yule Ball, but did you, was that a Comic Con thing or was it just sort of a end of the year like boost or what? Uh, I think it was a mix of both. Uh, we had a lot of people who were on the fence about coming to uh, some like our second and third event because of weather, uh, and uh, it was getting a little colder. Uh, but uh, we're hoping uh, that since this uh, event is indoors, uh, it will be uh, more people are coming out, uh, and we're seeing that our Discord has uh, a lot of activity constantly, especially in our player creation uh, tab, uh, just for people who want to understand how it works, how to create a character, the rules behind it, uh, like what they can do, what they can't do. Because um, there's nothing worse uh, from a uh, creative aspect than having this awesome idea uh, and then 
being told, well, I can't, you can't do that because that doesn't work. Yeah. Um, it goes against so the rules or whatever. Yeah. So it's good to like flesh things out in, in our discord and then have, uh, have it all put on paper uh, later down the road. Uh, so we're, we're seeing uh, about three to four new players per game. Um, we would love to see that progress all the way through next year. Um, but we understand that it'll get uh, kind of hectic at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, our, uh, our, our, kind of shot or our shot in the dark for uh, the end of the year this year is to have 40 active players uh, come to every event and be active on our discord. Um, so it's that that's kind of our goal that's uh, for this year. a lot. That's okay. So then that begs the question, what is the minimum amount of players you need to run an event? Dan. Uh, well, I mean, I think our, First one when we ran, there was what, fifty players, if that maybe, eighteen, I think. And, yeah, and we've we've steadily grown from there. Um, and then, so, so eighteen is like the lowest you can run an event with, or that just happens to be the lowest you've run one with. Uh, that's the lowest we've run one with. Uh, the lowest that we would probably run for would probably be like mid teens, like 14, 15. Um, but, uh, that, that, uh, we hope never happens. Um, because, uh, it would, uh, it would be kind of crappy on our, our part for putting together all of the story and not having everybody enjoy it, you know, having to hear about it secondhand. What? Uh, so like, sorry, that number, when you say low teens, that does not include the shapers, correct? No, no. Right. That's active players involved in the storyline. And then how many shapers would you need for that? Uh, we run with um, six right now. Um, so we have myself, Daniel, uh, our head writer, uh, Dale and Salent. Uh, our props master, uh, Nathan, uh, what's Nathan's last name? Bryce, Nathan Bryce, uh, and, uh, our, uh, costume, uh, and magic supervisors, uh, Cody and, uh, Madeline Casey. Uh, they are, uh, that's kind of our shaper team. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then below, uh, I guess below our shapers is kind of this middle gray area, uh, what we call a marshal. Uh, they're basically a rules lawyer for a specific thing. Uh, so we have currently, we have a monster marshal who deals with all of our um, NPCs. So basically you come to the, the back during your NPC shift for the weekend. Uh, and th- uh, our monster marshal, uh, Rachel, she will... Uh, dress you up in a different costume with different armor and you get to be something else for four hours during your weekend. So it's a, it's also a good way uh, of play testing certain um, different abilities or different play styles. So if you're a, if you're a magic caster and that's all you ever know and you're like, man, like I don't want to be a mage or my NPC shift. Well, here you go. You can be this bandit that just swings a sword and is able to backstab people like that. And it adds to people's um, experience at the event where they're able to try different things without having to worry about, oh, well, my character doesn't do that or I can't uh, like I don't have enough character points to learn how to swing a sword, uh, so it's a it, it's a good way to just play test things. That's, that's cool that you like, you know, you show up as a player, but you get to like be a monster for a little bit. Um, that that's very cool. Uh, and so you guys don't play the monsters; the players play the monsters. 
more or less. Uh, no, some of, some of us get to play monsters. Uh, I had my town NPC exiled the first game, so that's kind of what I do now is uh, jump in as a monster or, you know, uh, Jeremiah the fisherman if uh, if the town needs some saving. <laughs> that's awesome. So you said you had your character exiled? <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> what imagine showing up to a weekend you have to leave now uh that's that's, that's awesome I, that's so cool. what did you do to get exiled what happened uh, uh i said some things around some people that i shouldn't have said hmm. well that's, that's so quick so, end to your weekend so because because dan's because dan's very modest and he doesn't want to get into it <laughs> It was 100% his fault why he got exiled. Oh. <laughs> he, his, his, and his town NPC was the uh, trader's post, like shopkeeper. Okay. Uh, but he was also the leader of a under like a, a thieves guild. Uh, ah. So he he was hiring the the bandits that were raiding the town. Oh. Uh, and he made the mistake of going out and introducing himself to said bandits while there were players around who overheard the the conversation. Oh, no. Uh, and then they immediately alerted the authorities um, and uh, he was <laughs> um, exiled after the uh, short little trial we had uh, for proof against his case and whatnot. That's amazing. I love everything about that. That's amazing. Uh, the fact that that can happen, the fact that it did happen, and uh, how just, like, it just was so quick and at the beginning, and it just goes to show you what kind of chaos can ensue and, and how careful you need to be, you know? That's that's very cool. Um, so then, how can Winnipeggers get involved? That's That's really the last... Big, big question in my brain. How can Winnipeggers get involved? And and what is the process from start to finish that you would recommend? Like join the Discord and learn about it first? Or just screw it and show up to a weekend? Or like, what? how, how can they get involved? What are the different ways? And what would you recommend as being the steps they take? So let's uh, start with Dan. And we'll like I'll put you both up on the screen here. But you, uh, we'll start with Dan and you guys can toss it back and forth. Uh, so I definitely recommend joining the Discord first. We have a very active Discord with a lot of people that are very knowledgeable about the rules. Um, Nathan is also our liaison, so he'll help you in a voice chat to build your character, flesh it out, uh, that kind of thing. And then the players will get in contact with me, give me a list of, uh, you know, what's their character name, their character race, um, uh, their class, um, anything like that, and I'll set it up on the logistics site where they can register for events um, and come out in character. That's probably the best way to do it. Yeah, so like Dan said, our Discord and our Facebook groups are probably the, the best way to get in contact with us, um, mainly because those are our... our uh, lead social medias that uh, we use and that we're active on um 100 uh look up uh underworld larp on youtube uh, not only do they have a few short little videos on what larping is with them uh, that they have made uh, but uh, they also have uh, if you just search larp in general on youtube or just google it uh, there will uh, there will definitely come up some resources on what it is, uh, how to get involved with it. Uh, there's um, with us, um, we are a 18 plus uh, LARP uh, just because of the uh, subject matter that we uh, we deal with. Uh, because it is a horror LARP, there are some darker things like espionage and. Uh, murder and all those other things that uh, some preteens won't appreciate fully. Uh, and so, um, yeah, our, our socials are probably our best way to reach out to us. 
uh, and uh, they like we have like Dan said our play our new player liaison Nathan we have several active members uh, who are warm and welcoming um, not only for uh, helping create the your character but just to um, sit and relax and chat about other hobbies that you have as well um, and uh, on our discord we do have a uh, several role play channels that uh, you um, you are your character during uh, during those role play uh, chats uh, it's kind of just a, a nice little flavor between events to uh, to chat about what happened at the the previous event and plan out your next uh, your next event or uh, uh, so it's a it's a great way to meet people that you didn't see or have a chance to play with at the events uh, that uh, it's like oh well this person's really interesting or we've chatted a lot during uh, the downtime between events so I'm going to make a make a note to um, actually go and find them at the event and so that we can go kill monsters together or protect each other from the monsters that are coming to kill us, that sort of thing. Right. And there's, there's just, there's so many. So when you, when you started, what was the character you chose? And I love that drinking horn. I love that. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. It was my, it was a Christmas present for my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. She, she knows you. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so, what was what was when you guys started and we'll ask dan first and then and then you colton because you, you said at the beginning you know if you're a goody two shoes in life and you just want to be a jerk for a weekend or like maybe maybe you don't always follow the rules and you want to know like maybe i just want to stand up for something good you know like <laughs> so you could choose your characters what was your first character and and why did you choose that so we'll start with dan uh, so we kind of already touched on what I did. Uh, I went with an orc named Phineas, uh, who was the leader of the, uh, the field in Mist Haven. Um, I'm not normally a mean person, uh, but one of the guys there that's known me for years, uh, I kind of caught him snooping around in the, uh, trading post. And he said it was the most intimidating he's ever seen me. Um, so it was kind of fun to turn on turn on the bad guy for a little bit. <laughs> Normally, I'm uh, more of a noble, I guess. Uh, and for myself, uh, I am the mayor of the town. Uh, I am a uh, wolven, which is a canine humanoid kind of uh, hybrid uh, not a werewolf but not uh, you know that sort of aesthetic um, and uh, I am a uh, nature caster but I'm also kind of a, uh, a, a one one-handed melee uh, user uh, so I kind of uh, made him to be a, a hybrid of a, uh, a lot of things uh, that are just enjoyable uh, that I've played at other LARPs that I just kind of wanted to have this um, jack of all trades sort of uh, character. Um, I'm usually not a very intimidating person, um, but as the mayor, I've been told by players that um, they do not want to come and talk to me at all unless there's an issue with the town. Um, but uh, it's it's different putting on a like I'm I'm usually a uh, a happy go lucky kind of guy that just kind of goes with the flow and sits back and watches everything crash and burn around him. But, uh, <laughs> uh, and, uh, but having this uh, figure of authority uh, that everybody kind of comes to every now and again and looks, looks up to uh, and is uh, afraid of uh, in some, some character or some player characters are afraid of him just by how he acts and his mannerisms and, and all of that is kind of, uh, funny uh to me um because i i didn't think that i was playing him that uh that way i thought that i was being quite warm and welcoming uh to new players uh, or just players in general uh and then i found out very quickly at the second game uh that that was not the case 
<laughs> so uh, we're learning about ourselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's it's nice to kind of swap those personality uh, things just to be something different than yourself uh, for a weekend. Um, like LARP in general um, is like a, a community first, and then it's a form of escapism uh, where you're just able to leave town for a weekend and go join this other town, this fantasy town, and um, be something better or worse than your, your yourself uh, and have an active role. Like we're a lot, like in society, we're, we're very much cogs in, in the bigger machine, but at, uh, at LARP, or at least our LARP, because it's such a small airbase currently, everyone has a big impact on story and that's just like it's a it's a feeling like that i can't i can't really describe it it's just you you're part of something like yeah you, just, you feel this elation or this excitement when people are talking about the thing you did like that helped save them or um like you did something really cool or like there was a really great uh, role play opportunity that you just fell into like immediately. And it was just like, and people talk about it and it makes you feel good. Like it's, it's, it's this amazing, yeah. com complicated, fluid thing. Like it, it's, I don't it's know. Something that you, you equally have way more control over and less control over or less, less yeah. consequences. Right. Like it's, you know, oh, my character died. I'm going to have to make a new one, you know? <laughs> you know? It happens. Yeah. So I, I think that's great. Um, so I, just quickly, what is the max number of players you could run an event with, given the resources you currently have? Like you said, uh -huh. 40, 40 players would be like a, a good game for you if you could get them consistently. What if, what if 80 people tried to come? Is that doable or is that... Un unmanageable with the staff that we have currently that would be unmanageable uh what we are looking at currently is bringing some players who show initiative uh up to become marshals or even shapers just to um take away some of our minor responsibilities as game runners Mm -hmm. uh, so that we can not push them off, but just kind of like worry about is... the macro instead of all the micro. Exactly. Yeah. De um, delegation is key. I get it. Yeah. So currently I think 30, 30 to 35 would probably be our max currently. Um, 40 may or may not be pushing it, but um with that with as that number increases we would also have more players available for those four hour non-player character shifts throughout the weekend which are like a mandatory thing um what, what we have seen in the past with um other larp groups that we've been involved in is that nobody wants to be a monster you know, they want to be their character. They want to be the hero that saves the town, not the monster that attacks the town. So one thing that me and Dan both loved when we first got involved with Underworld was this mandatory four-hour shift that you are not your character. You are the monster in the bushes mm -hmm. trying to kill the town. So that, that sounds like so much fun to me. I don't know why anybody would not want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but to each their own, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so that's that's kind of the, the the meat and potatoes of it. Um, I mean, we we won't know until we try, right? Until we get that that amount of players, we like. Um, to me, failure is a opportunity uh, to learn. Uh, so if we get that many people and we crash and burn, then we just know, okay this is the number this is what we need to do to fix it so that we can run a better event next time for that amount of people perfect 
That's awesome. And okay, one last question, and we're not getting political in any way. That's a warning. Uh, but just how has COVID affected what you guys do? Uh, and and how did you correct that or pivot or adjust to, to sort of fix that? So I'll, I'll leave that to the two of you. But that's a very, very simply... How how have you been affected by COVID, and what did you do to adjust? Go uh, ahead. Sure. Uh, I mean, one of the huge reasons why we were affected was, uh, you know, just limits on amounts of people that you can have at these events. Uh, you know, back last summer, you can only have, you know, what was it, a household that you could see. Mm -hmm. uh, so clearly you couldn't run events, you know, like that. That's why we only ran three events last year. Uh, you know, like uh, that. Uh, but uh, on site, because it's kind of an outdoor area, uh, basically what we did was we made masks voluntary uh, in outdoor areas. Um, and the landowners did ask that uh, anyone uh, who, if there's more than four people inside of a building, because we do have structures there, um, that they be masked just to be safe uh, for everybody. Um, and on the most part, I think uh, we never really had more than four people in a building at once. Everybody's out outside enjoying the event. Um, but uh, there were several times where we uh, we ended up having to have uh, masks uh, in some of the buildings. Uh, one of the one of our encounters was uh, inside the infirmary, and that one we had to have people masked for. Um, but uh, it kind of fit to being uh, inside the infirmary. Everybody had these masks on, so it was kind of kind of fit a little bit to the uh, the theme of the 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 quest that they were on. Um, but uh, it's a good idea. Yeah. Right, right, you can almost write that into the the actual like, you know, there's a, there's a plague on, you know, going around and mm -hmm. you know that was that was one thing that uh, the global logistical team kind of uh, warned us about to not uh, bring in that kind of um, or at least don't bring in a plague that um, mimics the same symptoms as COVID because. Um, people have, like at the end of the day, we're a business, so we can't alienate people. Mm -hmm. um, uh, even even as people, we shouldn't, um, but not just because we're a business. Um, but uh, <laughs> like, we can't, uh, we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't be writing something because we don't know what's going on in everybody's day to day lives. Uh, you know, somebody could have been affected really badly or had a family member affected really badly by it. Um, so we just kind of, there's the, there's the plague of undeath and that's kind of all we've really touched on, um, with that kind of, that plague, um, label, I mm -hmm. guess is the best word for it. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's, I mean, that's awesome. And again, if people want to get in touch with them, they do have a discord and the, the easiest way to get to the discord one is that there's a link in the comments below if you're watching the video um, on YouTube, if not, if you just go over to their uh, Facebook page, so that'll be if you just run a run a search for Underworld LARP Guildhouse Mist Haven, and that'll be there. Uh, so I I think that that would be a great way for people to sort of start to figure out how to get in touch and jump from there. Um, I think basically. Most people these days are comfortable since COVID started anyway with Discord. Uh, Discord has become a very popular platform since the onset of social distancing and all this. So uh, I don't think that's a big stretch for to, to send people there. Um, mm -hmm. But are you? What, what else do you guys do? Like so? What like what do you do? What's your what's your day job, Colton? Uh, I am a custom woodworker. Uh, I make, uh, I fabricate and install um, custom wine cellars. Sweet. Uh, so it's a, uh, a wine storage system, uh, glass walls, 
uh, cooler unit uh, and uh, just a we make we make uh, wine cellars for billionaires. If if you <laughs> if you want, you can say the name of the business. Um, oh, I guess yeah. Uh, my boss will love that. Uh, so we uh, I work for Genuine Cellars. Rob uh, Denami. Yes, exactly. I know him. Oh, you do. I awesome. Do. Yeah. Okay. I'll let him know that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, he'll, he, but yeah. he'll know me too. He'll know me very well. Okay. Yeah. Him and his whole family. I uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, okay. and Dan. Uh, I am a uh, manufacturer for a place called Adam Bits. Uh, like uh, bits for diamond drilling. I basically run kilns and uh, all that kind Did of stuff. Do you say Adam to, Bits or to... Diamond Bits? Adam Bits. Okay. I, yeah. I hear Adam all the time because that's my name, you know? So, <laughs> like, I'm like, did he say Adam or did I make that up? But no, yeah, you said it. Okay. Uh, yeah, A-T- <laughs> A-T-O-M. Right. <laughs> Up and at them. Um, <laughs> sorry. For the Simpsons fans in the room, yeah. if you know, you know. Um <laughs> <laughs> that could be your play. That could be your player, Adam. Yeah, radioactive yeah. man. Yeah, we could we could figure out a way to radiate somebody, and yeah. that that could be your uh, that could be your character at the LARP. I I'm not mad at that idea. Uh, there's anyway. I I was looking at the rules, and there was a type uh, the character Ein Einher Einher. Yeah, that was the type of character that like most jumped out to me for like you know advantages, disadvantages, all that, and I mm-hmm. thought that. That might be neat. Anyway, uh, for those that don't know what that is, you'll have to go to their website and look it up. Um, and what is the website? Is it is it underworldlarp.com or? Uh, it'll be larp.com. Uh, but if you Google underworld larp, uh, just in Google, uh, the uh, the head page, like the global page, will come up, uh, and uh, it has a bunch of resources on there, uh, like our the the rule books. Uh, character, uh, like all the the race descriptions, mm-hmm. uh, a little bit of back back lore into uh, the world itself, uh, like Mod Madir. Um, we don't have uh, we only have control over our sm- small portion of Mod Madir, which is Mist Haven, um, but uh, they have uh, all the stuff about gods, dragons, all the big name people that uh, we have to ask permission to use uh, before. Uh, before we get them killed, so to speak. Um, so uh, it's uh, it, it's a it, there's a lot there to read. Uh, if you're a slow reader like me, um, section off a weekend. <laughs> there's also an add-on for your browser. Uh, there's Natural Speak <laughs> or Speak yeah. Speakify. You can get it, and it'll literally read it to you. And you can change the speed and blah blah blah. If you're really that slow at reading, I highly recommend it. I used it for university. It's it's amazing. So okay, I'll have to look into it. Yeah, it's super and, helpful. Uh, <laughs> don't don't worry the about the uh, about the uh, elves remaining uh, header that the website has. Elves oh. remaining. <laughs> They got, so, they got a countdown. I'll, I'll let I'll let Dan talk about that because that's his favorite part about Underworld. Life. Oh, it is. Okay. It what, is. what are you even? What is what? what? Uh, there is an angel uh, that visits from essentially hell. Uh, it's called the Mortigeist, uh, and when the elf counter on the website reaches zero, it appears at your next game and you know shows up. For about an hour, maybe more, it depends. Uh, and it hunts down the elves in town. Oh, that's and, uh, crazy. You run and hide. That's amazing. So the, back, the back lore on the Mortergeist is, like Dan said, it's a it's an angel that's fallen into into hell, and uh, it uh, it was attempted to be locked away by a sub race of elves known as the Stone Elves. Um, but the Mortergeist was too powerful for it. So the stone elves are now known as the shattered elves and they are enslaved by the Mortergeist. Um, and when the Mortergeist comes, uh, all it wants is to stay longer. And the only way to make it stay longer is to sacrifice living elves 
to it. That's so these, cool. What a, so these, what a cool piece of lore. Yeah. So these these shattered elves basically run around like hooligans, kidnapping elves, uh, so that they can sacrifice you to this fallen angel. And uh, if you if you decide to meet this fallen angel and fight it, um, don't. <laughs> it's not a good time. <laughs> okay, fair enough. This is this you know this run fight hide. This is very much a hide run not fight scenario. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> Can you fight the shattered elves to make them go away? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Good to know. Good to know. Uh, anyway, that's that's very cool. I I understand why that might be your favorite part of the thing. That's that's great. I I don't know why that's so exciting. That just is. It's like what? Um, every time I learn something new about the way that the underworld LARP works, I'm just like very intrigued and excited. And and as a person who's never LARPed, I think that you know I really I really should just do it. I should just do it. I don't know what my hangup is. Uh, I mean, first of all, it's been like access. Like, where do you even do that? Um, but since running into you guys, now I I know the way in. Um, now, if if there's people that don't like the horror side of it, is is one of the other LARPing groups, that, would you recommend one of them? Or would you just say, like, no, it's us or nothing, you know? Uh, um, we actually have a game mechanic for, for that situation. Oh. Um, who are uncomfortable with the subject matter or anything like that can call blackout and their character will blackout and be removed from the from the quest or the oh. um, the only thing is if it ends in everybody dying their character dies as well so, ah, so you're, you're basically uh, putting your fate in the hands of others mm-hmm. yeah right huh um, but it's it's a it's a way for uh, for players with sensory uh, or auditory uh, triggers, as well as subject matter triggers, um, because we are eighteen plus. We do touch on and it's dark horror, so you know um, things happen, uh, and so it's it's a way for the rule set to um, allow people to come out and enjoy every other atmosphere of the LARP other than that one. That one triggering aspect, yeah, that's I like that. That's smart. That's smart because it, it makes it, it it opens your door to way more people, mm-hmm. just with that one little thing. And and for for people who are like on the fence, but they're like, oh, I don't know if how comfortable I'd be with this. That gives them an opportunity to be like, okay, I'm th- I, we got here and I'm not cool with it. To like, <laughs> yeah. exactly, yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> we're just gonna pull the ripcord here, and uh, yeah, I like it. I like it. That's cool. Well, gentlemen, thank you so, so much for joining me here. Uh, this has been great. I, I could literally talk to you for hours. And I think at this point uh, I have because um, we <laughs> talked today and I talked, I, I think I talked your ear off at Comic-Con. So I, you know, I, I'm very, very excited about what it is that you guys do. I love that it's available to, to people here locally in Winnipeg. Uh, just one more very cool event that people can take part in um, amongst many in the city, which is the whole reason the WPG exists, is to expose new events that you, you otherwise wouldn't have heard of or have access to or whatever. And so f- I'm really, really excited about that. And we'll have to make sure that when you do guys, when you have events, we'll, we'll, uh, we can help you out with... Uh, some you know pushing pushing it for you and so we'll we'll be in touch we'll be in touch yeah, uh appreciate that awesome. so uh for those listening i just want to remind you that yes you can follow us on all the social medias the wpg magazine uh and it's literally the wpg magazine on all social medias be that facebook twitter instagram youtube twitch tiktok and again there's nothing on the tiktok yet but <laughs> it's coming so do like and follow uh, I guess you can't like because there's nothing there, but follow and, uh, you know, Twitch is a very hit and miss platform. We are, we've got plans to start, uh, really ramping up our content output in the near future. So do just get on all those platforms, follow us on all those platforms and engage with, uh, with us on whichever ones are your favorite. Uh, I want to thank 
these two gentlemen yet again, Colton Day and Daniel Johnston of the Underworld LARP Guildhouse Mist Haven. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. I hope it was uh, an enjoyable experience for you as well. It was great. great. Awesome. Well, thanks again. And uh, yeah, so do follow us. Hit up the WPG.ca. Um, you can, we'd, we'd love to have you there. That's kind of what the front of it looks like. Uh, and this, this podcast itself, if you go to the WPG.ca slash TWR, which stands for the winter peg report. I know we're all about the acronyms here. WPG, TWR, THX as in thanks. Um, I guess that's not really an acronym, but you, you get my drift. So, uh, we're out of here. Thanks very much. Uh, we'll see you next time. Next week, our guests will be uh, the folks from Winnipeg Streamers, uh, led by Sammy Soros. So, that's her name, Samantha Requima. And we're very, very excited to have them join us. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.